Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's figure out how to calculate the transfer coefficient when we're having forced convection. And of course, that requires us to calculate the Nusselt number. So in the previous video, we found out what the Nusselt number was. Here's the definition of the Nusselt number. It depends on some constant, the Reynolds number, and the Prattle number. That needs to be fed into this equation to come up with the transfer function, which then puts, gets put in this equation to calculate the amount of heat drawn from an object. So let's say we have an object that has a length of 0.2 meters. We're blowing air across it at a speed of 0.1 meter per second at room temperature. And so we're going to try to determine the transfer coefficient. And of course, to do that, we have to find the Nusselt number. Now, beyond the Nusselt number, we need to calculate the constant, the Reynolds number, the panel number, and we need to know what those uh, exponent, exponents are. So this equation right here is the correct equation provided that the Reynolds number reigns below 300,000. Once the Reynolds number goes over 300,000, then the flow is such that we have to come up with a different equation, and we'll show you that one. But let's start with this equation right here. So how do we calculate the Nusselt number? First of all, let's calculate the Reynolds number, which is equal to the product of the characteristic length of the object, the velocity of the flow, the density of the fluid, and the viscosity of the fluid. So for air at room temperature, we have the characteristic length of 0.2 meters, the velocity of 0.1 meters per second, the density of air, 1.225 kilogram per cubic meter, and the viscosity that would then come from a table is equal to this, and then we have a Reynolds number of 1,441. It is less than 300,000, so we're good to go. Next, given a particular Reynolds number, in this case 1441, which falls in this range right here, we have a value for C, and we have a value for the exponent, which means that now we know C, we know the Reynolds number, we know the exponent. Finally, we need to know the Prandtl number. The Prandtl number is equal to 0 0.699, we saw that on the previous video, we had a table. It depends on the, the temperature of the fluid and the type of fluid that we're using. And if the Reynolds number is greater than 0.6, we can take the exponent of that as being one third. We're now ready to calculate the Nusselt number. So the Nusselt number is equal to the constant, which we determined to be right here, 0 0.683 multiply times the Reynolds number, which is 1441. We have to raise that to the m power, uh, the m power right here, and the m power is determined by what the Reynolds number is, so 0 0.466. Of course, we're just now grabbing that number. We know that there's going to be a, a changing range of that number, but let's just grab, go ahead and grab that. That's probably a pretty good uh, representative number, and that's going to be the exponent. Whoop. I was going to put it multiplied, exponent 0 0.466. Then the Prandtl number, that is equal to 0 0.699 raised to the one-third power. Notice because this raised to the one-third power that the Prandtl number will get a value of pretty close to 1. All right, let's go ahead now with the calculator, see what that's equal to. So let's take 0.699 raised to the one-third power. That's 0.887. Multiply that times 1,441 raised to the 0.466 power. And then we multiply that times 0.683 equals, and we have about 18, 17.96. So the Newton number Nussel number is equal to 17.96, which is about equal to 18. Now, the units for that, remember, that's going to be, uh, let's see here, that we're going to be watts per square meter times Kelvin. Joules per second per square meter per Kelvin would be the, uh, oh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Nope, not yet the units for that, because those are the units for the trans transfer constant. So let's hang on to that for a moment. Next, we're going to calculate H. H is equal to K over L times the Nusselt number. So in this case, K, let's see here, do I have a K? Yes, I wrote it down. K for air is equal to 0 0.026 
divided by the characteristic length was 0 0.2. It would multiply it times the Nussel number, which was going to be just let's make it 18. And that's going to be units of watts per square meter times Kelvin. All right. And let's multiply the times. 0 0.026 divided by 0 0.2, and we get 2.34. So H equals 2.34 watts per square meter times Kelvin, and that then would go into our equation right here in order to calculate the amount of heat transferred from that plate due to the difference in the temperature, whatever the difference in temperature is from the plate to the air above it, caused by the forced convection. Now, of course, the number is relatively small because the airflow is only at 0.1 meter per second. Notice that if the airflow gets larger, we get a, a larger Reynolds number, then the exponent goes up, the Reynolds number goes down, we get a slightly different value for that, but we'll show you some examples in the future of how to do that as well. So now at least you know that for a particular characteristic length, knowing all the parameters of the type of fluid, the, the, the temperature of the fluid, the velocity of the fluid, and so forth, you're able now to calculate the Nussel number from the Nussel number. We're able to calculate the transfer coefficients, which then can be used to calculate the heat flow away due to forced convection. And that is how it's done.